Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Open your Bibles, if you will, the first, chapter, uh, the first book of Peter, chapter 4, and verse 14. We're in the names of the Holy Ghost. We're about to wrap this up. There's only, this name, there's only three more names, including the one we're going to be working on today, and maybe going past, maybe get a couple of them in today, leaving the last. Last one's the Comforter, the Paracletos. That's the one we're going to cover last, and uh, because there's, there's so much to that name as the, of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> but we're starting out today, First Peter, chapter 4. Verse 14, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. The spirit of glory. Hallelujah. And um, the name is given to teach us that the Holy Spirit imparts, manifests God's glory to and through us. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. Now listen, we can say amen or we can look like a bunch of knots on the log. So I want some amens. I want some hallelujahs. Want them. Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> just as the spirit of life imparts life, this, I'm, I'm sorry, and just as the spirit of truth imparts truth, he imparts glory. Hallelujah. Amen. He is the administrator of the grace that culminates in God's glory. God, glory being God's manifest presence. Um, you know, throughout the Old Testament, the word glory is used. There's 371 verses found with the word glory in it. But let me say this. We, we talk about the Shekinah glory of God a lot. Most of the, most, the vast majority of the, of the words are not the Shekinah. Okay? It is the splendor and the gloriousness of God. I want you to know God's splendor shows up. Amen? Amen? I'm telling you, the spirit, of, the spirit of glory will manifest himself in services, and he'll manifest the splendor of God. Hallelujah. The, the bright, I, I mean, they, they looked up at the mountain, and it was on fire. It was just the splendor of God. The angels said, in the year that King Uzziah died, well, I mean, the prophet said, I saw, the, in Isaiah 6, 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Hallelujah. And, the, and there, was, there was seraphims, and they flew, each having six wings. With two, they covered their face, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they did fly. And they cried out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Holy is the Father. Holy is the Son. Holy is the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. The whole, then it says this, and the whole earth is full of his glory, of his splendor, of his majesty. Glory to God. And see, one, one thing is we don't see enough of the manifest presence of God in our services because we don't, the churches don't even believe in it. You know, I mean, we had, we saw recently on, on, on an article, there's some Presbyterian doctor Doctor of theology said he doesn't even believe in God, but he can defend his Christianity, and no, he can't. Presbyterian USA just changed the bylaws of their constitution to permit homosexual marriage, and Ichabod was written over the post of their doors, of their churches. The spirit of God has departed. And throughout, but let me say this, you know, we got churches that, that, are, that are accepting homosexual marriage. We're having churches that are accepting all kind of sin, you know, but I'm telling you, what, the, the, even churches that aren't doing that are having the l lack of the presence of the glory of the Lord in their manifest presence and in their midst. God wants to manifest himself in our midst. God wants to demonstrate himself in our midst. God wants to outray and outshine his glory unto us, glory to God, hallelujah, in our midst, hallelujah, to us through us in us God wants to have his glory manifest hallelujah. hallelujah this is the year of manifestation this is the year of demonstration this is the year of visitation of what the glory of God hallelujah. and in that glory whoo hallelujah in that glory sickness has to bow its knee Poverty has to bow its knee. Sin has to bow its knee to the majesty and the glory of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that we come into our church services 
And we may be burdened. And we may be weighted down. And we may be dealing with things. But the manifest glory of he who sits on the throne. Who lights heaven with the glory of his face. Shines on you. Shines on your friends. And shines on those you invite. And the light comes. The glory is manifest. And the works of darkness are eradicated in our midst. Because God has visited us with his glory. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. telling you God's glory <sighs> Moses cried and said Lord show me your glory he said you can't look on my face but I'll put you in the rock and I'll put my hand over and I'll walk by and you see my backside the glory of that, that was too much Are you here? Did the prophet, uh, Abraham, and to talk about when God made the covenant with Abraham, and they cut the animals and the blood ran, and he fell into a sleep. When he woke, he awoke, there was a smoky fire and burning furnace walking through the midst of those sacrifices. It was the glory of God. That's how you, you could, he had to describe it as a smoking furnace. They had to describe it as a, as a burning fire and a smoking furnace down there walking. God's glory. It is not like a flashbulb light. The children of Israel saw the glory. Hallelujah. They look up at the mount and they see the fire on the mount. You think the bush burning, not burning up was the bush was actually on fire? No, he who is glorious had come and stood in that place and the smoking furnace and burning fire was shining out from that bush. The bush wasn't on fire. It was the glory of God coming out of that place. Moses came and, and he stood there and the voice said, Moses, he said, here I am. He said, get your shoes off. This is holy ground. Man, I want to preach it, and I, I can't ever get talking about this. You want to get holy. You want to get reverent. I'm telling you, that smoking furnace and burning fire can walk through your life. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And eradicate the works of darkness. Can you say amen? amen? Bring destruction to the kingdom of Satan. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I said, somebody say glory to God. Amen. I'm trying to find, I got, I got all these scriptures I could go, I'm trying to see which one I want to jump on. Moses said, listen to this. And it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle that the people rose and stood up every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass, after Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the temple, and the Lord talked with Moses. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, that's not where I was going. That's still good. There's places where, uh, um, where one place Moses couldn't even go into the temple or the tabernacle because of the glory. Another place, and, and the Bible says of the priest, they could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. The glory had descended. They couldn't even stand up. See, people talk about, oh, these, this slain, being slain in the spirit. We call it, you call it being slain in the spirit. You can get knocked over by the Holy Ghost, whatever you want to call it. It's just, it's just the manifest presence of the glory overtaking an individual's physical abilities to be cognitive and stand in their own power in the presence of the glory of God. Let me tell you something, you cocky people who think you're going to walk up to Jesus and say this and walk up to God and say this when you get to heaven. No, you ain't. 
I said, no, you're not. The four beasts and four and 20 elders have been sitting up there for millennia. And every, everybody, every few minutes, they just stand up, throw the crowns, fall on their face, and say, glory. Hallelujah. Say, worthy is the lamb that was slain to take the book and to open the seals thereof. They just can't take it. I said, they just can't take it. And I guess Sarah will fly by and get the crowns, bring them back to them so they can throw them again. When the glory of God's manifest, let me say something. Every once in a while, Jesus would let it out. Are you here? I said, are you here? I said, every once in a while, Jesus would let it out. And they came to, they came to Gethsemane to arrest him. And they came up to them. He said, who do you see? They said, it's Jesus. He said, I am he. And the Bible says, they went back. Just a little bit of that glory got released and knocked them to the ground. Just knocked them down. On the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter, James, and John went up there, fell asleep, woke up. There's Jesus with, a, with Moses. And uh, somebody help me out here. Ezekiel, Isaiah, which one was it? Isaiah? Elijah. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> Elijah. He's sitting there with Elijah. And, and, and um, they look up, and his raiment had been transformed as glistening noonday sun. He let a little of that glory out. It, it just cha it changed his clothes. I said, it changed his clothes. One minute he's in off-white, next minute he's in bright white. Just a, Moses got up there with the Ten Commandments, or the, the, all the commandments, we, call, we always call them the top, top ten. Got up there with the commandments of God, came down out of the mount, and they had to put a veil over his face. Because his skin had absorbed the glory so much that he, was, he couldn't look on his face. Now, I know in the movie The Ten Commandments, he gets all white-headed at that point. I don't know. We don't have any Bible evidence of that one. You know, I mean, it makes, good, makes a good theater. But we do know that his face shone so bright, they had to cover it with a veil so they, because they couldn't look on it. The seraphims flew around and covered their eyes because of the glory. And the Holy Ghost is called the Spirit of glory. I've seen the glory. We don't see it enough. We don't talk about it enough. We don't entreat the Holy Ghost enough. I've been in services where I've seen the cloud. The bright, the bright whiteness of his glory manifest. Been in services where I didn't see it, but I knew it was there. You could, you could spiritually discern his presence, the glory of God. And the weight of his glory coming on us. Urabatasi lakadadada kamande. Melekusli ekrabadarakada. The weight of his glory coming. The weight of his glory pressing down on us. Not to oppress us to saturate us with God even in our flesh even in our flesh the presence of God coming on us oh sarabeke sarabeke I've seen the glory of God transform circumstances in moments of time Remember Dad Hagen talking about preaching on the glory. There was a man up in the back of my woman who got her husband, been after him to come to church forever, and finally got him there, and he just sat up there, and he started mocking. Ah, he's just making that up. I don't believe that. Start praying for people, they start falling. Ah, he's just knocking them down. Man had a heart condition. Wife's, you know, hoping he could get healed. Got to talking about the glory. And Brother Hagin said, he said, he stand there and said, he saw it roll in the back of the building. He said, he stepped back up on the platform because he saw it rolling in. And all of a sudden, this man's up in the balcony of that church, and all of a sudden, he started going, it's going all over me. It's going all over me. 
It's going all over me. And then his wife said, what's going on? He said, he, he said that, that a power he's talking about. It's going all over me. Got saved. <laughs> hallelujah. Healed, filled. Hallelujah. Got all the, hallelujah. Brother Hagin said he's, he's been in service where a flash of lightning would go through the service. And you, wait, you open your eyes and everybody in the building that was unsaved is at the altar getting saved. Everybody in the building that's not filled with the Holy Ghost filled with the Holy Ghost. We're talking about the power and the glory, the manifest, the manifest glory of God. We're not talking about rock climbing walls. We're not talking about, you know, flashing. And we've got lights up here. They, they'll, they'll strobe. We're, not talk, we're talking about the manifest glory of God. Where God just shows up. His glory is demonstrated. It's coming. I'm telling you, Wednesday night, Thursday night, we've got our faith out there. We, we're, we're expecting Hallelujah. We're expecting demonstrations of the Holy Ghost. See, see, demonstrations of the Holy Ghost are manifestations of his glory. Gifts of, gifts of healing, manifestation of the glory of God, it heals. Light comes in contact with darkness, and darkness has to flee. The presence of God, of his glory. So the spirit of glory... <laughs> sent the manifest, the glory of God, the manifest presence of God. So I've never been in a service like that. Hang on to your seats. I said, just hang on to your seats. And let me say this, prepare, your, prepare yourself this week. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Well, I feel dry. Pray in the Holy Ghost. But I feel, feel pray in the Holy Ghost. Prime your pump and let God just manifest and do. I said, prime it. You ever, I mean, you know what it sounds, some of you know what it sounds like. That, that, that metal rubbing against metal trying to get it going, you know. It's all rusty on the thing. It just sounds, it sounds terrible. And then you, and it starts going, so back because a little bit of water gets coming up there. And then you keep pumping it. Just keep pumping. We're just going to keep priming the pump. I think too many church services were grieving the Holy Ghost instead of entreating the Holy Ghost when he wants to manifest and to do. Think about this. Transformation takes place there. Moses went and stood as, a, as arrogant as he was. I will turn aside and see this great sight. Goes up the mountain, gets up there, walks there, and the voice says, Moses. He said, yeah, I, you know, let's just kind of get real here. Uh, I'm here. Moses has arrived. You know, like uh, the, the, on that, that cartoon, the fun has arrived. Moses has arrived. But the voice answered back and said, take your shoes off. This is holy ground. Moses was cocky. I said, Moses was cocky. You know it. I know. We all know it. But after a few minutes in that glory, God says, who will I send? I mean, he says, he says this, I'm sending you to deliver my people. And that next word out of Moses' mouth, instead of who am I, I mean, instead of here I am, is who am I? See, God will, t will get your cockiness out of you. Because God don't need cocky. We need bold. We don't need cocky. Well, cocky does it in the flesh. Bold does it in the spirit. Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up. And after the seraphims flied around and cried out, Holy, 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 the whole earth is full of his glory. He says, Woe am I! For I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And one of the angels, the seraphims, went and took a coal, took tongs and took a coal off the altar and came and placed it on his lips and said, This has cleansed your iniquity. And God said, Who will go for us and who will do what I want him to do? And Isaiah cried out and said, Here am I, I will go, send me. Took, took him who had no confidence and no self-worth and the glory transformed him into a man who could be used of God to reach a nation. The Apostle Paul, anger, religious, full of venom, breathing out threatening was on his way to Damascus with letters to bring any of them in that way bound to Jerusalem. 
and he encountered the glory. <laughs> he saw a light brighter than the noonday sun. Now, I'm going to tell you how bright the glory is. It's brighter than look up at the sun. Don't look at long, but look up at the sun. Don't, don't, don't look at the sun. Don't, go, don't, just don't do it. I mean, you know, get your, take a camera and film it. <laughs> then look at it. A light brighter than, you don't see lights brighter than the noonday sun. Have you ever seen a light brighter than the noonday sun? Walk outside, there ain't nothing brighter than, you can put on a flashlight, you can't even tell it's on. You don't have to put it there and compare it. You can put it on the ground and you can't tell it's on. Because the sun is so bright. And yet there was a light that came out of heaven brighter than the noonday sun. Knocked him off his horse and blinded him. And said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And Paul, uh, Saul says, who art thou? Lord? I guess his theology taught him he was experiencing the glory of God. And he better wake up, shape up, or he's getting ready to get shipped out. Amen? The glory of God took someone who was full of religion and full of venom and turned them into the greatest apostle of all. The great revelation we all talk about, the in him realities, because he came in contact with the glory. The glory. God manifest. Let me tell you, these people, I, I, listen, I, I get it. People teaching on blood moons and, and all the signs of the times and all that kind of stuff. And, and those, are good, those are good indicators to look at. But we know our churches need the glory. Our churches need manifest presence of God. We need people coming in and coming in contact with a God who's alive and real and cares about their life and will transform them by coming in contact with him, glory to God, to get them saved, to get them healed, to get them delivered, to get them set free, to bring, I mean, to break financial bondage off of them, to break addictions off of their life. Does God condone homosexuality? No. Does God love the homosexual? Yes. Will God deliver the homosexual? Yes. He, he desires to. And they'll come into his, God's glory. He, he wants to manifest his glory and break the bonds of sin out of people's lives. Does he love the drug addict? Yes. Does he condone drug addiction? No. Will he set the drug addict free? Yeah. I said, yeah, he will. I said, yes, he will. He'll bring his glory and he'll saturate people. And he'll break the bonds of wickedness. And he'll break the bonds and the chains of, of, of captivity. And he'll, let, he'll release the captive. Look over in Luke chapter 4. I'm trying to find a preaching place. I keep looking for it, Benny. I keep looking for that place to get in there and preach. And I, just, I keep going. He wants to. Luke chapter 4. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Who? The spirit of glory. See, the same, see one, of the, one of the names of the Holy Ghost is the, is, the, is, the, is the spirit of glory. The spirit of glory was on Jesus. Because he's anointed me. Preach the gospel, the good news to the poor. And let me say something. The good news is not keep doing what you're doing. It's okay. The good news is that the power of God will deliver you from what you're doing so you can live holy before a holy God. That's the good news. The good news is not that God's changed and become accepting of sin. The good news is God's given you the power to be free from sin. The Bible says, he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Not free from judgment, but free from the captivity of that which brings judgment. There's a difference. Now, if you get free from what brings judgment, you won't hit. The, ju the judgment may still be there. You just won't get hit with it. Y'all can hear y'all go home. Think about that. If you're free from that which brings judgment, and you're not attached to that which brings judgment, when judgment comes, you don't get hit. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is loving me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. 
Send me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the year of Jubilee. That's what it means. God's glory has come to deliver you. And I think it's time, listen, church, I think we have put up with poverty devils long enough. Amen? It is time we start speaking 24-7 what the Word of God says and stop saying what we got and stop saying, you know, listen, we don't have to be out of balance with the Word. We can speak faith in the Word and, get, and, get, and not just get over. We can rise up to the top. Hallelujah. He'll deliver you from poverty. He'll deliver you from the captivity of lack. His glory has come. His glory has come. Well, if you're unsaved, you need to get saved. If you're sick, you need to be healed. If you're broke, you need prosperity. If you're mentally bound, you need freedom in your mind. Jesus said, I'm, come. I'm anointed. I'm anointed by what? The Spirit. That's why we can come into a service and have his manifest presence and all kinds of marvelous things take place and just like that. Well, are you dependent on that? I'm not dependent on that. We've got to live by faith and not by sight. But I'm telling you, what, I love it when the glory shows up. And there are, more, there are people in the world who need to come in contact with the glory. Well, they need intelligent faith. Really? I, that's, not, that's not even a Bible term. It's a made-up, don't-believe-in-the-glory term. Now, if you use that term all the time, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You, we we want to have Bible faith. We want to have Bible, I want to have Bible intelligence, but I don't want to have intelligent faith where I have to reason everything out, you know, and we got to be uh, philosophical, and we got to be mental about it. My faith is based in what the Word says. It is not of my intellect. It is of my spirit. Amen. So I don't, I'm not looking for intelligent faith. I'm looking for Bible faith. And then I'm not looking to do away with all the manifest presence of God. We need glory manifest. As a matter of fact, they went everywhere preaching the word, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs. What were those signs? It was the spirit of glory coming along. It was the spirit of glory showing up. It was the spirit of glory demonstrating God. It was a spirit of glory in, in manifestation in front of people and around people and through people. They were getting healed. They were getting devils cast out of them. The miracles were taking place. I mean, supernatural signs were going on. Glory to God. The Bible says these signs are follow them that believe in my name. God still wants to work signs, wonders, and miracles. God still wants to do what he's always done. He wants to unleash his glory. He wants, to, he wants to come in contact with humanity in a way that will eradicate the works of darkness in their life. And I'm not just talking about sin. I'm talking about sickness, disease, poverty, light, mental oppression, suppression, depression, possession, get the devil cast out. God wants his glory manifest. Hallelujah, Father. Oh, Father, we thank you for the glory. Somebody say, thank God for the glory. Thank God for the demonstration of the glory of God. Now, we got our faith out there. See, our faith is out there. Wednesday and Thursday. Not only is the ministry team Shekinah glory coming. Come on. Not only is the ministry team Shekinah glory coming, but the Shekinah glory is coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're expecting Shekinah and Shekinah to bring the glory and the glory. Amen. Glory to God. So we declare it. We speak it. Say it's manifest in Jesus' name. In our midst. Hallelujah. Now you better get some folk in this building. I'm telling you. Stay on them. Call them up. Harass them. Say, I mean, just say harass them. You need to be in church this week. Well, they left the church. Tell them they need it. Pastor Ed doesn't care if they left last week or 10 years ago. He loves them and wants them to come get blessed. Get in the church service. Amen? Don't, I don't care. I don't care if they cuss me out when they left. Come and get blessed. Amen? The glory will fix that. Amen? I mean, they could have cussed me out and called me all kinds of names on the way out of the door. If they come and get the glory, the glory will fix it. 
Amen. We want the glory to fix it. Can you say amen? So, Father, we thank you for, for the services coming this week. We thank you for Wednesday and Thursday. Are you, are you putting, no, 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 I just, that's where our faith is. So this will come on Wednesday and Thursday, the glory of God be manifest in our midst. It'll be strong. We, just, we make a demand that, that the strongest manifestation we've ever seen at Faith and Victory Church will be made manifest this week during the Shekinah Glory meetings. So we call it, we summon that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the manifest presence of God to be stronger than we've ever seen or ever, ever experienced here at Faith and Victory Church. Oh, glory, that I just saturate every person. Bring transformation and change to every life, to every household in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We speak it. We declare it. We call it done as we summon it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, we trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the giving online button. Thank you and may God richly bless you for your giving.